The Egyptian Religion by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. Also, please remember to skip lines between bullet points to receive full credit. Their religion. The Egyptians practiced a polytheistic religion, which means they believed in many gods and goddesses. They believed that honoring the gods and goddesses was a community effort, which means they thought everybody was responsible to honor the gods so that the gods would be happy. And they believed in a very elaborate afterlife. They even mummified their dead to prepare them for that trip to the afterlife. During the Old Kingdom, Egyptians believed that only the pharaohs and the elite were important enough to go to the afterlife. And that meant that only the pharaoh and their relatives were even mummified. However, a revolution, a revolution takes place, and during this intermediate period, the power of the pharaohs is thrown into doubt. When it returns during the Middle Kingdom, and then into the New Kingdom, Egyptians believed that all people had a chance at eternal life. This opened the door for that any person who could afford it could be mummified. Once mummified, Egyptians believed their soul would be judged by Osiris, who would weigh their heart against a feather. And this feather symbolized justice. Does anybody know the name of this feather? Or what it was? It is known as Mat. M-A apostrophe A-T. And you better not highlight it. And for that sake, draw a feather next to it. Please take a moment and highlight polytheistic, afterlife, old kingdom, only pharaohs and relatives, mummified, go to the afterlife, middle, new kingdoms, all eternal life. Feather, Justice, Mott. As you are writing this all down, and I have gone very quickly, please feel free to pause the video at this time. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Some symbols to know about as you're looking at the pharaohs. Gods. And, and any pieces of Egyptian culture. The first one is known as Ankh, and try your best to draw this. It's sort of like a person, a stick figure, but no legs. And it represented the symbol of life. As you'll notice in the next couple pictures, which are pictures of the gods, it was always carried in the hand. Next is the crook and flail, and they are the symbol of kingship. And they balance both what a king has to do, be a caregiver and a punisher. The person who is the shepherd and the person who must discipline them. Balance, all right? Here's the scepter or staff, and it's the symbol of power and domination. the Eye of Horus, which symbolizes royal power and courage. Please take a moment and just simply highlight these four things. The names. 
Again, as I've gone quickly and asked you to, to do a lot, please feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. This is Ra. And notice right away that he's got two of our symbols, Ankh and the scepter. He's the god of creation and the sun. Egyptians believed that Ra created the world. They believed that the rising sun was the symbol of creation. And that every day Ra started in the east and rode his chariot across the sky and set in the west where he was to do battle in the underworld. Please take a moment and highlight God of creation and the sun. Next we come to the god Amun. He's the god of the sun as well, fertility and reproduction. Eventually, these two gods will come together and form Amun-Ra, sometimes also seen like this, Amun-Re. Egyptians combined them during the New Kingdom, and eventually they are formed as to one. He, is now, he becomes known as the king of the gods, the sun god, god of creation, who protects the rich and the poor. Please take a moment and highlight king of the gods, sun god, god of creation, who protected the rich and the poor. We come to Osiris. As you notice, Osiris is blue, like a bluish green. And that's because he's dead. He was killed by his brother Set, or Seth, out of jealousy. Those of you who have read the Red Pyramid have heard depictions of this story. Seth wanted to take his place as king. His wife Isis, Osiris' wife, found him and brought him back to life, and he became known as the god of the underworld. He is the one that judges you and your decisions, and he is thought to be the world's first pharaoh who served Ra. Speaking of which, here's Isis, the wife and sister of Osiris and the goddess of motherhood and love. Please highlight goddess of motherhood and love. And again, if I'm going too fast, please feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. And here's Seth. He kind of looks like an anteater, although I think it's hard for you to tell. And he's the god of chaos. Highlight that. In fact, he murdered his brother, Osiris, and he even plucked out Horus' eye. It's kind of a mean thing to do. And it's not that he's a bad guy. He's necessary chaos. With every good, there must be bad. There must be balance in the world, the Egyptians believed. And sometimes that might come off as evil. Probably the most popular god, or well-known god, is the god Anubis, other than maybe Ra or Horus. And he's the god of funerals and death. He was thought to protect the dead, and he supervised the embalming process. Here's Basset, the goddess of cats, women, and children. Egyptians believed that cats were sacred because they killed rats, mice, which ate their grain and caused diseases. Sometimes cats were even mummified with the pharaohs. And Basset was thought to be the protector of Ra, a great warrior. Here's Bess. He's kind of funny looking, isn't he? And Bess is a human-like god who protected women in childbirth. She, he helped children grow up, basically. And he protected them from evil forces. And you see this in the Red Pyramid series, where Bess is one of the characters who protects the kids during their adventures. Please take a moment and highlight protected women in childbirth. Here's Horus. He's the son of Osiris and Isis. And he is the one who potentially becomes known 
as sort of the god of the pharaoh, in a sense. He's the one who originally, they believe, gave the power to the pharaoh. He is the representation of the kid that replaces his father and takes over. And you just need to know, though, he is the sky god by the end. Oop, pardon me about the bell. We're going to keep going. This is, this is Sekhmet, the lion-headed goddess, the goddess of medicine and war. Please highlight medicine and war. They go hand in hand. Absolutely. The next one is Thoth, goddess of wisdom and writing. And he is thought to be the one that taught the Egyptians how to do hieroglyphics. And he is the one who showed Isis the steps of mummification to bring Osiris back to life. And happy you know is the goddess, the god of the Nile. Please feel free to go back to any pieces of the video. Otherwise, this is the end. Thank you.